Let's draw some ruins. So I've still been playing a ton of Elden Ring, riding around the lands between, and there are just tons and tons of ruins everywhere in this game. And it got me thinking it would be really fun to draw an overhead ruins map to use for a D&D game or just for fun. And honestly, it wouldn't be that hard either. It'd be pretty easy to draw some ruins. So that's what we're gonna do. Draw some ruins. So for this map, I'm using a one quarter inch grid paper with a few Faber-Castell pit artist pens, size S, F, and M. They're basically micron pens. Honestly, you don't really need grid paper and you don't really need any fancy pens either. Whatever materials you have, just a random sheet of paper and whatever kind of pen, you'll be able to draw a pretty cool ruins map with whatever you got. So before I get into drawing the actual map on a scrap sheet of paper, I'm just playing around trying to figure out how I want these ruins to actually look. As I'm drawing, I'm sort of thinking about the story of this place. So I know that these ruins are gonna be like super collapsed. You know, it's only the stone walls left standing and vegetation and dirt and all that stuff is, is grown up around these ruins. I guess they're in the, the wilderness, in a place that isn't visited very often. So just by thinking about the story of this place a little bit, I've kind of already figured out the things that I'm gonna need to be drawing here. So we've got stone walls that are rough and don't connect, that are, are ruined. <laughs> we got vegetation, grass, bushes, trees, you know, overgrown stuff. And then we have floor or dirt. I think all the floor in this map is gonna be dirt. Maybe there's some rotting wood left, but, but not much, because this place has been ruined for a long, long time. So the stone walls are just little square rectangles, roughly drawn in, you know, n nothing is straight or connected properly, and all of the bushes and trees and stuff are just little squiggly lines. You know, this place is super run down, so you don't have to be precious with any of the drawing. It can be wonky and rough, and that style of drawing will fit with this area and the story of this place. Now I'm moving on to actually planning the map. So with the pencil, I'm very, very simply roughing in the drawing. And, and actually I'm drawing the buildings as if they weren't ruined. You know, I'm outlining the walls and the pathways, but I'm not getting too detailed with it. So just a single line for the walls. You know, I'm not drawing every brick the trees are just circles. I'll, I'll make them tree-like later. And then I'm also roughing in a few extra lines that sort of indicate the elevation of this place. It maybe sits on the top of a hill near a forested area, something like that. Once I have everything roughed in and I'm confident enough to jump into inking, then it's time to start inking. <laughs> so for this map, and I think most kind of overhead perspective maps, I think using thicker and thinner pins or at least building up the thickness of your line weight really helps to focus your eye and tell what is going on because these overhead maps tend to get a little abstract looking. So I'm starting by blocking in the walls with my size F pin, my fine point pin. I'm just following the lines that I already planned, drawing brick after brick. They kind of disconnect from each other and I'm leaving holes where I want the wall to be completely crumbled away. I'm also drawing just as many bricks that have toppled onto the ground as are still standing. And then I'm going back in with my size M pen for, I guess, medium size pen. I am adding some shadows to these walls. So I kind of picked a direction like, like the sun was kind of to the northeast, I guess. So so the walls are casting shadows to the southeast or the, the left and bottom side of the walls. So I'm just going back through and adding a shadow. I'm being real rough with it, but giving these walls an extra line weight of thickness is really gonna up that contrast. And since these ruined buildings are kind of the, the focal point of this map, they get the, the thickest lines. You know, if I'm gonna be using this as a battle map, these stone walls are the things that are gonna separate the players from one area to the next. So these are the, the main focus. 
they get the thickest lines. After that, I'm going back in with my size S for small tip pin and filling in all of the vegetation, all the squiggly bushes that are grown up along the side of the walls and are overtaking this ruined town. And since this vegetation is sort of the like filler stuff, the the debris all over the place, that would typically be easy to climb over or move through or even just less of the focus of the map. That's why all the vegetation and stuff gets the thinner, smaller line. I think the funnest part about drawing maps is going into Zen mode and just kind of shutting your brain off and, and drawing, having fun. And the cool thing about the ruins maps is that you can be messy with it. You know, this isn't a pristine city where the buildings are made out of finely cut stone. You know, this is, everything is shifted around and it's crumbling, so none of the measurements have to be right. The bricks can be whatever size, the vegetation is overgrown and out of control, so it can be squiggly and all over the place. It's nice to just forget about making mistakes and have fun drawing. And actually, I should give a shout out to Ross, also known as Two Minute Tabletop. I'll have a link down to his stuff down in the description. Makes amazing, amazing, amazing color virtual tabletop maps for your games. Really, really cheap and amazingly inexpensive for the quality of maps that he's constantly putting out. Super encourage you to go check out his stuff. And it's honestly a really excellent place to get inspiration from. His ruined maps look really, really awesome. So, you know, as I am working on this map, I am still thinking about the story of this place and I'm not going too crazy with it. But, you know, I'm thinking like I've started drawing these paths going from building to building. You know, it's it's not completely overgrown. So that must mean there's some sort of activity going on here. Maybe something dangerous that keeps people from the town further down the hill from, from coming up here. I put a little bed and campfire in one of the buildings just to give a hint that maybe somebody is living here. And there's a stairwell that leads underground in the ruined tower. You know, maybe whatever lives down there is the reason this place is a ruin. And it's up to some adventurers to come check this place out and figure out what's going on. Or maybe there's just some awesome treasure awaiting beneath the ruins. <laughs> so I am drawing this at a quarter inch scale. So I could easily scan this map in, use it on a virtual tabletop as a battle map, or maybe at this scale, it's just a nice reference for your players. It can just help describe what, what the players are seeing as they're exploring these ruins. And actually, now that I'm thinking about it, it would be fun to grab a pad of big one inch grid paper and fill up a whole page full of ruins and fun destroyed buildings. <laughs> All right, now that the inking is done, I have decided I'm gonna color this map. I'm too, too inspired by Two Minute Tabletop not to color this map. So I'll be using some Copic markers. Honestly, what you color with doesn't matter. I'm just gonna have fun with these markers, but you can use colored pencils, you can use watercolor, you can color it in Photoshop, whatever you want. Just, just have fun with it. So I'm actually jumping back over to my scrap sheet of paper and, and doing a few color tests on that initial scrap drawing just so I don't mess up my basically done, fully finished map, picking some weird colors. You know, I want to figure that stuff out first. And honestly, as I'm working on this, I've sort of solidified a, a color idea. I've had, you know, maybe it's, it's something from art school left over that I've forgotten and I'm now re-articulating in my brain. But really it's the same idea of contrast with thick and thin lines, only it's using lighter and darker color to create that contrast. And really the idea that I'm thinking about is how to apply that concept, contrast using lighter and darker colors to making maps more legible and readable. So how am I applying that to map making specifically? 
well. So the lightest areas, in this case the grass, are the, the most easily accessible. The, you can walk wherever you want in the grass and not be impeded in any way. Now I've chosen a sort of medium, uh, a little bit darker brown for the dirt pathways and inside the ruined buildings. And in retrospect, I think I should have made it lighter because those areas are just as easy to walk through. But as I was working on this map, I was thinking, oh, if you go into the building, it should be a little bit darker because you're you're crossing a threshold. And you know, that should be a point of contrast just to, to show that it's a little bit different than the outside. And then I made the bricks of the buildings the darkest color. So those are like the places that you can't move through. That's the highest point of contrast, just like the, the thick lines are the the solid areas where the players can't pass through and you know it's a it's a full-on barrier and really all you're doing is using contrast whether it's thick and thin lines or light and dark color to just help the map be more readable quicker to understand at a glance it's a simple concept that makes the map much easier and nicer to look at. So what do you think of these ruins? How did the map turn out? Let me know in the comments. Hopefully it inspires you to take a crack at drawing your own ruins map. Looking at it, I really wish I would have used a, a lighter brown for at least the pathways on the outside of the buildings. But you can learn from my mistakes and make a better looking map yourself. I am really happy with how the trees turned out. You know, I added some more contrast to the trees because you're not you're not walking through trees. So yeah, I like, I like the way the trees look. <laughs> if you do decide to make your own map, please hit me up on Twitter or Instagram. I love seeing the stuff you make. And if you'd like to support me making these videos and also receive monthly tabletop role-playing games adventures in the mail or in your inbox, check out my Patreon. This month's adventure is called Flick Silverpin's Guide to the Sky Garden. There's giants and a blue dragon and a, like a legendary thief character and like cool magic items and stuff. It's gonna be really fun. Check out the Patreon. I really, really appreciate all the support I get on there. And I really, really appreciate you watching these videos. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.